Zakia Ansari is the Advocacy Director of the New York State Alliance for Quality Education. It's the leading statewide organization that has been fighting for educational equity for the last decade. Ansari uh, is also one of the co-initiators of the recently formed national grassroots movement, Journey for Justice, an emerging alliance of grassroots community-based organizations from over 20 cities across the United States, representing constituencies of youth, parents, intergenerational organizations who've been impacted by the closing of schools and communities of color. Uh, Ansari resides in East Flatbush, neighborhood of Brooklyn, New York. I'm sure Bl Brooklyn is in the house somewhere. All right. <laughs> you won't believe this when you see her. She is so young and beautiful. She is the mother of eight children and the grandmother of three. This is a woman with some energy, some vision, and a lot to tell us. Thank you, Zakia Ansari. I'm usually the first one to cry or get emotional, so thank you, Stephen, for lighting up the room for me, just in case um, something like that happens. And who's the person that's keeping my time, because I can go on. I know they said there was somebody who's gonna let me know. Way in the back, over on the side. Okay. okay, so I know where to look, all right. Uh, so thank you so much. I'm excited to be here and I have my paper here because I do have a lot to say, and so I wanted to stay focused. Um, so it was, and this word accountability is such a loaded word. Uh, and as a parent on the ground, like what exactly does that mean? And I would, I would challenge us to think, especially in the community that I live in and, and as part of the Journey for Justice Alliance, we would challenge to say, has there ever been real accountability in our communities, period? Uh, you know, in black and brown communities, students living in poverty, communities in poverty, has there really been accountability? So when we talk about new accountability, it's interesting. Uh, and it made me think about that. So I'm going to share uh, some things, and I want you to tell me who said them. So here we go. Now this is, I'm going to be really honest. The best thing that happened to the education system in New Orleans was Hurricane Katrina. The education system was a disaster, and it took Hurricane Katrina to wake up the community to say that we have to do better. Who said that? And he runs education in the country. Just saying. Here's another one. Unfortunately, there are some parents who just come from. They never had a formal education and they don't understand the value of education. Anybody know who said this? Michael Bloomberg. He ran New York City, I would say, to the ground, but that's a whole nother conversation. He said that in response to parents who were fighting back against school closures. Predominantly black Latino parents who were pushing back dismissed us. Right? And these are the folks that we are supposed to be holding accountable. Listen to this one. When the people who create the rules know so little about who we are and where we come from and where we came from, what reason have we to trust them? Anybody know who said that? It's a good one, right? Kenyatta Collins, a 16-year-old in Lake Area High School in New Orleans. How do we hold, how do we make sure? She's talking about accountability. That's the accountability we want to see. But often the voices of those most impacted by these policies are never heard. This is a young person who didn't have to be told what to say, as we heard from Stephen sitting next to that young student on the plane, knows what is happening is not right. Knows what is happening in regards to education as we stand right now in this midst of accountability, that huge, <coughs> big word, that who is accountable to her? Her voice is powerful, and it's many, right? Philadelphia this week, we just saw thousands of parents, students, um, educators come together. You know, people from Newark went to Philadelphia because the people who are we holding accountable, Governor Christie and Corbett are out there saying, we need some money and we're helping to raise money because we're doing the right thing by education, right? And they didn't come there to say, oh, yes, you are. They came here to say, oh, no, you aren't. They put themselves on the line to get arrested for civil disobedience because they believe that what's happening right now is not education. It's educational neglect. Right? Um, those quotes are really powerful, I think, because these are the people that are in the spaces. 
that are making these decisions, except for the last one, right? The youth, the young person, parents, educators are never at the table, yet we deserve to be. Um, where's the collaboration? Who talks to us? When are we part of the conversation? Obviously, what we've seen is after it happens. And guess what? In the process, our children are lost. Collateral damage. So the shift must happen now. And I think this room is part of what accountability looks like. It's bringing everyone in the room and everyone to the table to talk about the change that we need to see. And I can go on and on about all the bad and all the things that are not happening right. And, and I would dare to say that those on the other side, the quote unquote reformers, would have us do that. But I think if we focus on the what we need, it shifts us from the conversation of charter and district public schools, right? But I think it's really worth noting because what we believe, and what we've seen in New York City of 160 plus schools closed under Bloomberg administration, I'm gonna ask for this moment of silence as I read this, 111. 160, 204, 12, 42, 39, 30, 45, and 26. And that's just some. And what are those numbers for? Number of schools closed around the country. Hundreds. And in those schools are people. And in those schools are children. And in those schools are part of a community. Shuttered, closed. We would dare to say, set up for failure, sabotaged, and abandoned. And I would dare to say that predominantly all of them, black, Latino students living in poverty. Systemic. It's not an accident. It's not a maybe. Hundreds. And those schools represent community. So when you create these school deserts, just like we have food deserts, what do you expect to get out of that? Who's accountable for that? Some of these schools were doing really well years ago. Like they talk about in New York City, we, we, we have so many schools that say, we were, the, we were the pride and joy of our district. We were able to offer so many things. I hear that over and over again. What happened? No one asked that question. They just assume that it's the community. It's because of those children. They don't care, those parents don't care about what's happening in schools. So we must do it for them. Absolutely wrong, absolutely incorrect, absolutely incorrect. Parents and communities in these cities that have experienced these closures and other things in their community have been fighting back for decades, for decades. But no one's listening, that's the problem. No one's listening. And how do we get our voice out there? There are people in this room that are connected, actually sit at a table with Arnie Duncan, absolutely touch Obama and other parts of the state and country, touch the people that are doing these policies. But we're never in that room. And until we are in those rooms, as parents and students are sitting in that room to share our story. It cannot be about data anymore. We need to be able to go in there and Kenyatta needs to be able to share the story about how she feels. The young woman on that plane needs to be able to share her story with Duncan to say how she feels. That she's afraid of a test? How dare we disrespect public education? How dare we disrespect the lives lost to ensure that children have access to a high quality public education? So what is new accountability? What should it look like? First of all, we must be honest and talk about race and class in this country. Because until we keep kind of hiding that pink elephant under the room, we will continue to see the same thing. What does accountability look like? It looks like having me at a table and other parents around this country and students and educators who are impacted by these policies who people say they're going to work. They haven't worked, right? Accountability looks like having legislators like we had with the representative Gravaja from, um, uh, is that his name, Gravaja? From, from Arizona and others. Right? That only that vote and represent the people and use that vote to ensure that education specifically is at the forefront. Public education, that we're willing to stand up and, and say that we're ready to fight for that. And what does accountability look for look like? It looks like ensuring that we are really honest. 
that we look at ourselves and turn that mirror at ourselves. And that's everybody, because we all have a role to play in this, as parents, as educators, especially students. And until we're really ready to look at that and work in a collaborative way, we will continue to see the results we're seeing. Mm -hmm. I can't afford that. I have three grandchildren, a boy, two girls. They're all children of color. And right now, this country, this country does not see them as equal. The education system is not for them. It is not. It's not, I'm not making it up. So whether you're from New York City or you're from Chicago, you're from Kansas City, St. Louis, children of color are under attack. Education, public education is under attack. And this is our moment. This is our moment. This is our moment to really step in as a collaborative and say, not on our watch, not on our